So before I talk about this Brian Gutekind's quote from earlier today, I wanted to let you guys know I started a new Twitter account, X account now, I guess, talking about the Packers. And so if you want to follow that, in the past, I haven't been as active on Twitter and I wanted to start a new account sort of focused on, you know, the Packers and the NFL. So that will be linked down below. You can look up Luke Beller 3. It's the same as my Instagram username. So Luke Beller 3 on X if you use X slash Twitter. Now on to what Brian Gutekunst had to say. It was at least shared earlier today. He was on 97.3 the game. And here's a quote that he shared regarding these Jordan Love and Packers contract conversations. Quote, we're in those conversations right now, and I think the nice part about this is that none of these things are always easy or fast, but both parties want the same thing. We'd like to get this thing done before training camp for sure. Both parties want to get a contract extension done. I think that that that, that stability at that position really allows you to have some security with the way we build our team. We're looking forward to getting that done, but it never goes fast. So we have known for a while now that the Packers and Jordan Love have been in these contract talks. Back on March 25th, Gutekunst, when speaking with media, shared that they had begun the preliminary contract talks. And it wasn't until May 3rd that the Packers and Jordan Love were able to sign a deal, a new deal, if they wanted to, because they signed him to an extension last season. He had to wait an entire, the Packers had to wait an entire season before they could give him a new deal. So May 3rd was the earliest a new deal could have happened. And now it has been a little bit over a month since that day um, occurred. And so now the Packers, of course, have the ability to sign him to an extension at any time. But so far, we have not gotten, I mean, there has not been any new deal done at this point. And so the one part of that quote that does give you a little bit more insight into these talks that we hadn't really heard really much previously is that Gutekunst in the Packers front office, he said they want to get this done before training camp. And I think that if you're the Packers, you're looking around at the NFL right now, you see Jared Goff get a new deal at $53 million per year. And I think that Jordan Love will not make any less than $53 million per year unless he decides to go the Tom Brady route and try to allow the Packers to, to make more moves by signing for a little bit less money when it comes to his contract. I don't think that's probably gonna happen. But I think that's the only way he makes less than Jared Goff. Jordan Love is a better quarterback than Jared Goff, and he has a brighter future than Jared Goff. He's younger as well. And so I think $53 million is what Jordan Love should make. And if you're the Packers, the longer you wait, the longer that you have to sit around and not have this deal done, there's a chance that even more deals get done, which could push Jordan Love's contract numbers up even more. So it makes sense that Brian Gutekunst wants this to be done by training camp. And if they sign Jordan Love to a deal before, let's say, Dak Prescott gets a new deal, then they're probably going to pay him a little bit less money. And there are a few different quarterbacks right now that seem to have the potential of signing a new deal. It's not necessarily going to happen for sure. The guys like Tua, Trevor Lawrence, Dak Prescott, there's a possibility they sign a new deal. And honestly, I, if I were the Dolphins or the Jaguars, I, I just don't know if I would pay either of those guys $50 million plus. We were talking about Trevor Lawrence a little bit yesterday and looking at some of those stats. I just don't think that Trevor Lawrence should should be up in in that range uh, where Jordan Love, I think, deserves when it comes to what he's done in his first season starting. Um, So while I still think it's possible they get into that range because quarterbacks, you know, the market's always getting reset. I mean, not always, but lots of times these these contract numbers, we saw just Justin Jefferson recently get $35 million per year wide receiver becoming the highest paid. And so these guys are always jumping each other when it comes to these contracts because the salary cap is always expanding. The NFL is always, you know, making more money, which then leads to these teams having more money to spend. The players make more money. And so Gutekind is like, hopefully it gets done by training camp. If not, then there's a chance other guys sign. The Packers have to pay Jordan Love even more money. But if you're Jordan Love, as we've talked about, the longer he waits, the more money he probably makes. And so the question is for Jordan Love, at what point is he willing to say, okay, we're going to sign this deal? And it all comes down to these numbers, the guarantees, the length of the contract, all those kinds of things. Jordan Love agent probably talking with the Packers and they're trying to to come to an agreement in these conversations, take a lot of time as Brian Gutekind shared. And so when it comes to the training camp deadline, because right now Jordan Love has been playing in OTAs, 
I had wondered before OTA started if Jordan Love would maybe say, I'm going to sit out OTAs until I get a contract. That way, if I get injured, it doesn't you know, hinder my ability of making a potential $200 plus million. He decides to play through OTAs, which lots of other quarterbacks have done in the past. But he decides to play through it. He wants to be there for the team. I think that he is a, a leader of this team. And that's why I do wonder, like, would Jordan Love really be willing to sit out training camp, sit out practices that are pretty crucial for, for building this team? I honestly don't know if Jordan Love would do it. I think that if he had to, to get the kind of deal he wanted, like, I wouldn't really fault him for it. But obviously, you know, the more that your your top tier players are out there, the better because, um, you know, any, any day missed is time you could have spent getting better overall. But we've seen players over the years skip out on in training camp and, when you get, let's say you get through training camp and there's still no deal, that's where, when Jordan Love was asked recently, you know, would you be willing, be willing to sit out early in the season if a deal wasn't done? He didn't really give an answer. He didn't say yes or no. He said, I think it was something like, we'll see. Don't quote me on that, but it's something something like, we'll, we'll see. And so he's not really putting, you know, a limit on, on what could happen, which I, I think is probably smart. But I just don't feel like Jordan Love is going to sit out the season I mean, any game in the season to start the year, I don't think it's going to happen. I honestly don't think it's even going to get to that point. Best case scenario for the Packers and I guess us fans is that a deal gets done by training camp. Then we're not having to sit around and wonder, you know, could Jordan Love skip time? Could he miss some training camp practices? Let's hope it doesn't get to that point. But when these contract discussions are happening, sometimes a player has to force their hand to get the kind of deal they want to get. And that's just business here in the NFL. Teams make you know hard decisions like letting Aaron Jones go, offering him a, a super big pay cut, which seemed to make Aaron Jones pretty frustrated looking at sort of his reaction, all that, which I understand you you give your time to one team for such a long time, and then you probably feel disrespected when you get offered such a low amount of money. And so I think because players see and recognize that this is a business, the teams are willing to make these hard decisions, even with players who have been a focal point of a team for years and years. And so that's why if Jordan Love did sit out in training camp, I wouldn't fault him for it. Um, but best case scenario clearly is that none of that has to happen and that a deal gets done before the training camp period. And I, I honestly, when it comes to when this deal is going to get done, I honestly have no idea. I don't have some prediction of like, I, I'm pretty certain it's going to happen by this time because I have no idea what the heck they're talking about when it comes to numbers or how far apart they are right now. We haven't really gotten... Nothing's really come out that gives specifics as to, you know, how far apart they are or what the Packers want, what Jordan Love wants. I've not seen any of that kind of information. So I have no idea if they're like a day away from signing, if they're like, you know, one little tweak away from signing or if they're pretty far apart. Not sure about that. But the good thing is the Packers know they want to pay Jordan Love and Jordan Love, Jordan Love also, of course, wants to get paid. So both parties, as he said, want to get an extension done, which I think is a, is a good position to be in because you look at guys like, Dak Prescott. The Cowboys have said publicly they want him, they want to, you know, have Dak back. And he is, of course, for this next season because he's still under his contract for 2024. But I really do question if the if the Cowboys really want Dak back at this point, um, just because he has struggled in the playoffs. And I think that the Cowboys recognize that something needs to change. And I think it's all on Dak Prescott. But at the same time, I'm not sure the Cowboys want to pay Dak. And I think that if you're the, the Dolphins and the Jaguars... I just think that Jordan Love getting a deal is much much easier. It's a much easier decision to make, in my opinion, when you compare it to Trevor Lawrence and Tua, who are they're fine quarterbacks, but I just really honestly don't think they're at Jordan Love's level, and I don't think that their careers, when we get 10, 15 years down the line, are going to, to be anywhere close to what Jordan Love does and accomplishes. And so the good thing is that we're in this position that a year ago, we were wondering if Jordan Love would be a good quarterback, and now here we are, and the Packers want to give him, him an extension. And if Jordan Love, let's say, would have been a maybe 15 to 20, 25 ranked quarterback stats in that area, the Packers maybe wouldn't even be, you know, wanting to give him a new deal because he is still under contract for the 2024 season. So this is a very good position to be in. I'm glad the Packers and Jordan Love, you know, both want to get a deal done. It shows the Packers made the right move with Jordan Love that he is the guy in Green Bay, which we have all known for a while now since he started, you know, going off and this team started going off late in the season, and then, of course, in the playoffs, beating the Dallas Cowboys and almost beating the San Francisco 49ers. And so we'll see if this gets gets done by training camp. That's what Gudikins wants. We'll see if if Jordan Love wants that to happen. I mean, of course, he probably wants it to get done by training camp. The question is, will they be 
at the same number by that point. If not, it could go on longer. Who knows how long? But if they can get to that point before then, then a deal's going to get done. Um, but because we are now, it's June 4th, training camp starts in basically late June or late July. So we're about, what, six, seven weeks, something like that away from training camp. And so because a deal hasn't gotten done at this point during OTAs, and I assume Jordan Love will be there at mandatory minicamp, it feels like the the, the first big deadline will be training camp because it would be nice to have, have it done by then, which Gutekunst also agrees with. So we'll keep an eye on this one and see if any new things come out in the future. And if you want to stay up to date with all Packers news, feel free to subscribe down below. Also, I'll leave my new Twitter down below and I may start tweeting more often. But thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.